Hi everyone, my name is Angela from Angela Stitches and it's Monday today and I didn't get to stitch that much so all I did today was start the mansion on the Adams family and finish another spider and I worked on more on Nightmare I think so um, this is my progress on that so the stitches are so small that even though I work on it for a long time um, it doesn't seem like it seems like I haven't done that much, but I did quite a bit, I think. Um, I color my chart with different colors every day, so it seems like a lot of stitches on paper. And this is what it's supposed to look like when it's done. So I, I think I actually got the hinge done, like this area right here. So it seems like a lot of stitches on paper when I color my chart, but when I see it on fabric, it's just like a really tiny area. Um, but I'm not complaining. I really like the silk that I'm using. So I actually want to do a different piece with this silk, but two over two because Nightmare, I'm doing it on 40 count. So I'm doing it one over two. And I feel like I can't see the colors, um, that much compared to two over two, 32 count. So I'm thinking about, um... I think I might have a lot of silk left after Nightmare, so I'm gonna look for a different chart for for this silk, so. And I was looking at my schedule for this week, and I don't think I'm gonna have time to stitch at all, well, tomorrow and Wednesday, I think. And Thursday seems like I have, I'm gonna be a little busy too, and I really want to get to the mansion. So I actually picked out all of the colors for this mansion out of my um, stash, my coloring cotton stash. And if you saw my video, you already saw the colors that I chose. I'll just, I'll just show you them here real quick if you haven't seen my other video. But here are the colors. Um, I only converted the areas where there's a lot of solid stitching so you can see the um, color variations on it so these are some of the colors I think there's four let me see three and then I think this one is for the windows on the mansion but these are the four colors that I chose out for the mansion and I think it's gonna look really nice but I don't think I'll able to stitch with this until maybe Thursday night or Friday morning so we'll see so if I don't talk to you tomorrow or on Wednesday I'll probably talk to you on Friday or Thursday night so I'll see you then it's Thursday night and as I expected I didn't have time to stitch at all in the last couple of days so I didn't stitch on Tuesday, Wednesday, and today. Um, so I don't have any progress to show you, but I can show you my little Halloween stash. I thought I had a lot more, but this is all I have. Um, what you see on the screen right now is all I have. And to start, I think I want to. I think I want to show you some of my past finishes. It's not FFO'd yet, except for one. So I'll show you those right now first before I show you the charts. I think what happened was usually when I shop online, um, before I purchase things, I put it, I put everything in the shopping cart, and then I decide later to move it out to my wish list. So that kind of helps me not to spend too much money on each um, order that I make. So I think some of the some of the things that I thought I had was just um, moved around between the card and the wish list. So it kind of made me think I had it, but I really didn't actually bought it yet. So, anyways, so this is my first uh, finish. It's not FFO'd yet. This is called "When Witches Go Writing" by the Prairie Schooler, and I did the main design and I also did the smaller design that came with the chart so here's the actual chart um when witches go writing and I got this chart because of this cat um I thought that was so you know how prairie schooler are kind of like quirky and weird so I really like 
their charts, especially the Halloween ones. Um, I like the Christmas Santa Claus charts, but I feel like the Halloween ones are really quirky. Um, and I wish I could get all of them sometime, but for right now, this is the only one that I have of the Prairie Schooler. And this is stitched on 32 count Swigart so Dirty Linen. It's one of my favorite fabric to stitch on. It's really, um, I don't know what it is, but it makes my stitches look really nice. So if I ever do the other Halloween Prairie Schoolers, I might have to get more, um, more of this, oop more of this fabric and this is the smaller design um i think i did this after the big one or i did the smaller one first and then i did the main one later i think because i got the chart because of the cap um so here are the two finishes and i really want to do the smaller pieces individually like in the chart shows um i think tiny ornaments would look really nice um, looking at it right now, I feel like this would have been really nice with hand eyes um, because there is a lot of big um, solid stitching areas like the moon and like the cat too, like the pumpkin and the house next to the witches or the witch. Um, so, oh, that's the chart. But um, I think if I had some hand dyed, I would have used it but because there's only like six colors, I think. So... But I only had DMC back then when I was working on this, so um, that's what I used. But maybe in my other Prairie Schoolers, if I do get them, I'll try to get some hand dyes and do that. And then this is the only FFO piece that I have. And this is a Mel Hill kit, and I can't remember what it was called. Oh, and there's some cat hairs here because I had it out. I have this out all year long, so it's been collecting dust. More cat hairs than dust, but okay. So the ceramic bead of a bird, and I don't think this is actually a Halloween piece, but it felt like a Halloween piece to me. So like with the colors of the cat and the crow and like the little spider here. But I really can't remember. I'll try to look it up and put it up on the screen if I, if I could find it. But I don't remember what it was called. And I did it on the perforated paper that came with it. It was black. And um, I actually stitched this when I was working at an office. The work was really seasonal, so there were some times where I didn't have any work to do, so I just had to sit there in the office. So I brought this to work and um, I think I started the project there and finished it there. And the frame, I got the frame from 123 Stitch and it is made for the Mill Hill kits. So that's that and I'm gonna show you my whips but You've already seen these before, so I'm just going to go through them real quick. So, Nightmare by the Courtney collection. And I didn't stitch at all since Monday, so this is what you saw probably in the beginning of this video. Um, and this is my Needle Minder by Color and Cotton from last Halloween box. So, this is what it looks like. And then... Um, I'm doing this on 40 count, 1 over 2, with the Silks For You Silk, and um, the fabric, I got it from Color and Cotton, it's called Patina. And this is the Adams Family by The Little Stitcher, and with this also, I didn't get to stitch at all, so this is what you saw earlier, probably. And this is on 32 count, 2 over 2, or I'm stitching 2 over 2 on 32 count, is what I meant. And I'm using DMC and color and cotton conversions that I did. Um, if you haven't seen the kitting up video, you can check that out. I'll put a link below in the description box. But these are some of the colors that I chose. So, the Adams Family. Um, and then, oh, this one. Um, this is a Heaven and Earth Designs. It's a story keep size where it's like really long and skinny. It's called Simply Meant to Be. And I'm doing this on a, I think, 32 count even weave. I think it's called taupe. 
Um, I like to do full coverage pieces on even weave um, because linen sometimes could be a little bit irregular. So full coverage pieces, I feel like it's better when it's on even weave. So I'm doing this one over one full crosses. This is my only heaven and earth designs and I think this would be really nice if I did it bigger. Um, two over two on a smaller count fabric. So maybe I don't think I'll ever have time to do another one But that's just an idea that I have. So now I'm gonna show you some of my Halloween stash So this is called Hol holiday horses and it's a book But I actually got this for the Valentine's Day horse um, Oh, that's the chart So but this is the Halloween chart that I really like um, I'm not too happy with how the cat looks, so maybe I'll try to fix that later, but when I actually stitch it, but I really like the design. I like the haunted house and the ghost and the witch, and I really like the colors on it, and so this is the chart that I got this book for, the Valentine's Day chart, and it's very, I feel like this, the whole look of it is very, like, 90s, um... It feels a little old with the back stitching like that, but I really like the patriotic one, like the roses here. That's really nice, but I don't know if I'll ever do the patriotic one, but I just might. I really like, so I like three of them out of the six designs. I like the patriotic one, I like the Halloween one, and the Valentine's Day one, so... Maybe if I ever do like a series, maybe I'll do the patriotic one as well. Um, so this is the back. Oh, there's five designs, I think, maybe. So, and this is by the Cooler Design Studio. And I really like a lot of their designs. I think I have a couple already. But um, I really like their 90s style of cross-stitching designs. I feel nostalgic towards the older style of cross-stitching designs and cooler designs definitely have that element. And with the other one that I'm about to show you too, I feel like it's a similar style. Um, so this is Janlin's Autumn Sampler and this is the Halloween section. The design itself is more of an autumn themed, but there's a little bit of Halloween section here, so I included it in this video. But there's like this pumpkin backstitching wallpaper stuff, which I really like. And all of the other samplers have this like wallpaper thing, backstitching on the back. So, sorry about the noise, but um, uh, I actually have the spring, summer, and the winter sampler as well. And I think this came with Ada, and I actually did a giveaway before. Yeah, I don't have the Ada in this one. So I think I did the giveaway, but I think I want to do this on linen or even weave. I haven't decided just yet. And then this is the last um, chart that I have, but this is the Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow by the Carriage House Samplings. So I also have the Village of Hawk Run Hollow, which I'm stitching it right now. Um, well, not right now, but I have it in my whip pile. But it's in the similar style, but this is... Um, in a horizontal uh, orientation. The Village of Hawkorn Hollow was a vertical orientation piece, but um, I really like this one because this one is a little bit more darker than the other charts that I have. And I think this is the center, which is with the cauldron is my favorite. Um, and then, but this is a lot of stitching. Like this whole block is pretty much solid stitching. And then there's this one block, like this is the last one, I think. Um, it's pretty much solid stitching, so. Um, I think this would be really fun, but for this one, I don't think I want to use DMC. I think I want to use the called for um, hand eyes. So that's pretty much it. Um, that's all I have that's Halloween themed. I thought I had more, but this is everything, and most of them are finished or started, so... I think I have to get more Halloween things for next year because there is a lot in my wish list, so I should start getting them. Um, it would be sad if I just have it in my wish list and when I actually go buy it and some of the things are out of 
print or things like that because that happens with cross stitching I think so anyways so that was my Halloween stash and I hope you kind of enjoyed this video I know it's not a lot of things compared to other cross stitchers but this is my stash and um so it's pretty late tonight so I don't think I'm gonna stitch today and I think I, I just want to read and maybe I'll start stitching tomorrow. Um, tomorrow's Friday, so I don't think I have that much work to do, so I might have some time to stitch. So tomorrow, I think I want to continue on the Adams Family and start really stitching the mansion. And after I'm done with that, I'll go back to Nightmare and try to get some stitches done on that one as well. We'll see how much I get done tomorrow. It's Friday night and I'm about to go to sleep but I wanted to show you my progress before I go to bed. So this is how much I got done for tonight and it's not that much but I got some of the roof and like the top portion of the house done and a little bit of the windows on the right side of the mansion. And I also parked some threads so I could just start working tomorrow. So, not a lot, but still a little progress. And tomorrow I have to run some errands, and on Sunday, I don't think... I gotta write a paper and prepare a presentation for school, so I don't think I'll have time to do a lot of stitching, but I'm gonna try to, because it kind of... Uh, cross-stitching kind of relaxes me at the end of the day for some reason, so I like to do it at least half an hour maybe so I'll try to do that and there's not much to uh, talk about this piece but except for that I'm enjoying it a lot um, I really love using color and con threads so but I am reading I'm still reading this book uh, it's called The Taking of Annie Thorne and yeah I like to annotate but uh, I'm up to 284 and I'm almost done. Um, it's getting a little bit violent so I have to take breaks in between the chapters because it's a little bit too, um, I don't know, aggressive and violent so I'm taking a little break from that and I also have to read other books so but I did get another book and this is by an Japanese author and it's translated in Korean and the title um, I don't know if there is an English title I'll put it put a link below in the description box but it translates as a promise that you can't take back I guess so it's about this guy and about this grandma and they're not related they just met um he was about to commit suicide and the old lady helps him and they get to know each other and the grandma has cancer so she only has like four months to live so she tells the guy that i'll give you all of my um, money or everything that she owns in return for a revenge for her daughter her daughter was raped and killed by these two guys and they went to jail but they come out in 15 years or something so she wanted somebody to kill them when they come out and she couldn't do it herself because she was gonna die pretty soon so he takes the money and he promises her thinking that there's no way she's gonna find out later um, even if he doesn't keep his promises so 15 years later, um, I think they lose contact with each other because it's 15 years and she was gonna die anyway, so. But 15 years later, she he gets a letter from somebody, I don't know who, um, that's the mystery, I think. But he gets a letter saying that those two guys are out now, so, you know, keep your promise. And then he kind of ignores it, thinking that it might have been a prank. But then he keeps getting this letter and at this point he has a family and a daughter I think and this letter keeps coming and then one of the letters it comes with a picture of his daughter so that's the premise that I know but I think it's super interesting so I'm really excited to read this and the author is called Yakumaru Kaku 
I'll try to find a link below in the description box and there's even a video in like a animation version of the premise that's the one that I watched so anyways I'm gonna end the video here um, I'm gonna try to work on the Adams family tomorrow and I'll up update you on that but thank you so much for watching and subscribing and commenting I really appreciate it I'll see you in my next video bye